And when I started this video, I thought I was going to tell you the TS-80 doesn't have enough performance because it's powered from USB and only pulls 17 watts. It's no good. But that is not true. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. This is the TS-100, and it is, no question, the best portable soldering iron you can buy today. Or is it? Because this is the TS-80, and I guess the question we're going to look at today is, can you improve on perfection? Why is the TS-100 the best portable soldering iron you can get? It's small, as you would expect from a portable soldering iron, and yet, if you search for other portable soldering irons, you'll find that they're often quite a bit bigger than this one. This guy drops easily into any tool bag right alongside your screwdrivers, etc. It can be powered via a LiPo, just plugs into an XT60, and it runs off of anything from 3S up to, I think even 6S LiPos it can run off of. So just grab any LiPo you happen to have in your bag, and it'll go. And its small size doesn't mean that it's not powerful. Running off of even a 4S LiPo, it can easily solder 12 gauge wires, anything you want to do on it. You could build an entire quad on this. In fact, if it weren't for the ergonomics, this here is my Hakko 888D, a fantastic, fantastic soldering iron. And the reason I still use this on the bench is that if you just hold it in your hand, you can see it, it fits really nicely and balances really nicely in the hand. Whereas the um, TS-100 is, it's just smaller and pinchy and it's just not as nice to use. But if this had different ergonomics, it would just be the iron I use all the time. So then what do we got going on here with the TS-80? What could they possibly have to improve compared to the TS-100. And in fact, that's the question I thought when I saw the TS-80. I was like, you already made the perfect soldering iron. You can only have made it worse. Did they? Hmm. One of the things they changed about the TS-80 is that the tip actually plugs in, and it just looks like a standard stereo connector. <laughs> I assume it is. The tip plugs in and is easy to change. Whereas on the TS-100, you have to take out a little uh, grub screw to change the tip. That's not too big of a deal for me because, to be honest with you, I don't change tips very often. But if it were easier to change tips, maybe I would. Hmm? A little chicken and the egg there. The other thing they've changed about the TS-80, and this is the one that I'm really curious about, is that it's now powered from USB, USB-C. And in fact, it comes with a USB-C cable. You can literally plug this into your freaking laptop. Can, is that true? Can that be true? Because USB-C is a very interesting specification. It, it has provisions for high power output. So if you have a high power output USB connection, you can even power this from it. But you're not necessarily going to be able to plug into every single USB port. Those little 2 amp USB ports on your, on your phone charger, they're not going to cut it. Now, it does come with a USB charger that presumably can output the amount of power that this guy requires. And we're going to test this a little in a minute. But that's the first question I have about this thing is, how can you get enough power off a of USB-C to really, can, is it, can you really? No, surely not. The TS-80 is supposed, it's rated for like 17 watts. And 17 watts is not a lot for a soldering iron. Now let's be clear that a soldering iron's wattage is not the be all end all of its performance. A soldering iron with very good thermal design can transmit heat into the joint effectively, even if it has a relatively low wattage. And by, by, con by converse, a soldering iron that's designed very poorly could have massive wattage and still do a bad job transmitting heat into the joint. And that's one of the reasons why the TS-100 is so effective. If you power the TS-100 off a 24 volt supply, it'll put out about 60 watts. And that'll mean it can heat up faster, but it's still very effective at soldering even 12 gauge wires down at 4S voltage where it's at a much lower effective wattage. So let's find out how these guys stack up. So right now we've got the TS-80 being powered from the USB power adapter it came with and Welcome, the new star of our show. This is a flare. This is an infrared camera that's going to show us the temperature of the tip, heat up, 
as the uh, as the iron heats up and we'll see how fast it does it. We can also see the screen here which shows the temperature that the TS-80 is measuring internally uh, which may, may or may not be the same as what the flare gun measures. Let's see. And as it heats up, we'll see how long it takes to get to its set temperature of 300 degrees. That's where it stops at, 300 degrees. Now we're only measuring about 100 degrees here in the flare, and I'm not sure why that is, but uh, there you go. Now here's the TS-100. It's starting at a similar temperature, and let's see how fast it gets to 300. And by the way, we're running off a four-cell battery here. Why don't you pick that, because that's what I usually run it off of. There we go. We're there. We've got a slightly different tip. This tip is showing 180 degrees Celsius instead of uh, instead of uh, the other one was showed around 100. I'm not sure why the flare gun is reading differently on them, but it's fun to watch the thermal camera heat up, isn't it? But if we go based off the internal uh, internal reading, it certainly does seem like it took longer to heat up, didn't it? Well, Joshua, it might seem that way to you, Joshua from the past. But uh, Joshua from the future can see that that's not true. The TS-100 heated up to 300 degrees off a four-cell LiPo in about 13 seconds. The TS-80 on the AC adapter heated up in about 18 seconds. And that's off a four-cell LiPo, so the TS-100 would presumably be even faster if powered off a five or a six-cell. Well, that's all well and good, but let's try some actual soldering with them, right? That's where the rubber meets the road. And I've got here some 12-gauge wire. And I'm going to just tin the wire and see how quickly it tins. I think that's about the most aggressive thing that we commonly do on a mini quad, is 12 gauge wire. We're going to start with the TS-80 powered from the AC adapter that it came with, then we'll try it from a battery pack and see if it's any different. And I do like that the TS-80 comes with this uh, chisel tip as opposed to the TS-100, which as far as I know still ships with a conical tip, which I don't think is the best for, well, almost anything. Um, let's see how we do here, though. We're at 300. Oh, well, let's turn it up. Okay, there we go, 400. That's where I, for 12 gauge, I think we just want this thing as freaking hot as it'll go. What I want to do is just see how long it takes the 12 gauge wire to heat up to the point where it starts sort of accepting the solder, or I would consider it like a finished joint. That's pretty good. Did the job. I mean, did it get all the way through? No, yeah, the solder is sort of pretty much gone all the way through. This is this is not a soldering tutorial, folks. Take it easy. Didn't really drop temp very much or anything. Let's do one more. Now, this wire is already a little bit warm from the last joint, so... Oh, yeah, that that worked really well. Now, just for comparison, how does my... how does my HACO do? 400 degrees Celsius equals 750... Thank you. Here's my HACO 888D. Um, I believe it's a 60-watt iron. It's got a similar tip. It's not quite as wide, I think, as the others, but it's pretty close. I would normally, that's that's roughly how I would normally do it, looking for the wire to get you know, liquid and take the solder, and we saw about how long that took. I, I'm not going to pull a stopwatch out on all of these, but they're all perfectly acceptable. They're doing a perfectly acceptable job of soldering this big 12 gauge wire. I'm kind of amazed. Now, how would you, might you use the TS-80 in the field? And the answer to that might be something like this. Certainly you could just have a USB power bank, but I 
don't. I'm going to have an XT60 and it's going to have some of this. This is the ISDT Q6. This is a battery checker, but it also is a quick charge 3.0 capable uh, power supply. At the moment, you can see it's taking 5 volts, 0 amps, 0 watts. Okay, well, let's see what happens when we fire it up. Now it's heating. Now the voltage has gone up. 9 volts, 16 watts, 7, 8, 11 watts. Yeah, I mean, you can see as well as I can. It does look like it's stopping at 9 volts. It's not going all the way up to 12 volts, which I think it is capable of doing. And now it's just holding at 300. Let's turn it up. Yeah, 15 watts. Yeah, so the watt rating seems pretty honest. It's not really going above 15, 16 watts, which is supposed to be something like 17 watts max. The last thing I want to check is what happens if you try to use this with just a regular old USB power bank, not a quick charge 2.0? This, that's what this is, and it has a normal 2.1 amp output. Low volt. Yeah, it's not happy. Yep, it won't do it. <laughs> it won't do it. It's trying to go up from 5 volts, which it uses to power on, to 9 volts, which it uses to actually solder. And when the supply won't do it, it just says sorry. Which is actually smart. It's a good thing. It means that if you do happen to plug this in to a dumb power bank or your laptop, and it doesn't have the circuitry necessary to put the power out that it needs, it won't just try and destroy it your laptop or whatever, it'll it'll go, hey, no, we, we're not going to do that. So then, which should you get, the TS100 or the TS80? And before I answer that question, let me just tell you, if you're in the market for a portable soldering iron, do not waste one second of your time looking at anything else. These are, no question, the best portable soldering irons you can get. The best combination of price performance, and most importantly, small size, easy to drop in a backpack or whatever, take wherever you're going. There's no reason to look at anything other than these two. But which of these two should it be? And when I started this video, I thought I was going to tell you the TS-80 doesn't have enough performance because it's powered from USB and only pulls 17 watts. It's no good. But that is not true. It solders just fine. I've done a bunch of work with it since uh, recording the beginning of this video, and it just solders fine. It's, I don't know how you can get this good soldering performance out of just 18 watts. Some, it's some unicorn magic. So then, how do they stack up against each other? The TS100 is about 55 bucks. It's come down in price since the TS80 came out. The TS80 is closer to about 80 bucks, so the TS100 is cheaper. The TS100 has separate buttons that can be pressed, whereas the TS-80 has a rocker, and that doesn't matter for most people, but you can put custom firmware, open source firmware on the TS-100 that adds some functions that it doesn't have. It's just a soldering iron. How many functions could it have? Well, the ability to like go into a custom menu and change settings and stuff, and it uses the ability to push both buttons at the same time and that you can't do that on the TS80. So you're a little bit more limited on the TS80 in the custom there's a I think there's I saw there's a version of like Tetris you can get for this that plays Tetris on the screen. So you're a little bit more limited with the TS80 in terms of what custom functions you'll be able to get because of the rocker switch. The TS80 make sure it's not too hot. The TS80 has a very easy to change tip very nice if you are going to be doing like a great big 12 gauge joint, but then a really fine soldering. It's easy. Just plug the tip in. On the other hand, I do every, I could build a whole quad with this iron without ever changing the tip and not really have a problem. But you might not feel that way. Some people aren't as good at soldering as I am. I'm not trying to blow my own horn. I'm just saying. You might be a benefit from the ability to change the tip. The big difference between these guys though is how they are powered. The TS-80 is powered from USB-C, and if you have ample USB-C power bank, or if you're gonna be plugging into the wall with that, where did it go, the power adapter, that's fine. But for I think for most RC hobbyists, the ability to power the TS-100 from the kind of LiPos with XT-60s that we all just have laying around by the many, 
I think that's going to be what puts the TS100 over the top for me. The TS80 might even have, I've seen some other reviews that say it's got slightly better soldering performance, even though it's lower wattage. And it's more ergonomic. The circular grip is a lot easier to hold, feels nicer in the hand than the kind of, mm, it's got these sharp edges on the TS100 that's not the best. But the power supply I'm not going to want to carry around something like this to convert my XT60 to a USB when I can just plug this battery directly into the TS100. So for me, I'm sticking with the TS100, but the TS80 is a very, very worthy contender, and if, if you have a USB-C power source, then it might be worth it for you to consider. That's going to do it for this video. There are links to all of these products down in the video description, including this nice little guy here that you can use to charge, well, charge the TS-80 or your phone, or and hey, it's also a battery checker, so that's nice. Links down in the video description, and you sure do help me out when you use them. I don't know if you've heard, this is my full-time job. <laughs> yes, it is. I pay my mortgage. I, I put food on the, my family's table by making stupid videos on YouTube for a bunch of people who like to fly toy quadcopters. Who would have ever thunk it? And one of the things you can do to help me out is you can use the affiliate links down in the video description, which give me a small percentage of the, uh, of the purchase price. Doesn't cost you anything. Just click that link and make any purchase, not just this item. You don't want a soldering iron? That's fine. Whatever you're about to buy, go click that affiliate link first, and I get a small percentage of it. It certainly does help me out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think. Did I miss anything? I think I, think I got it. Which do you like better, TS-80 or TS-100? Tell me in the comments down below. Happy flying.